Hey there, thanks for joining me for another episode of Blind Buys. I really appreciate you taking some time out of your day to spend with me as we open another fragrance. I was this close to opening another Elixir fragrance and absolutely punishing myself for what could be a week, two weeks, three weeks. Sometimes I get stuck and it takes almost a month. Depending on the fragrance, I get bored. I just don't have much to talk about. It happens, you know, um, the last fragrance was sort of like that. I was sort of uninspired and I need a break from that sort of fragrance. I almost opened One Million Elixir right after Jean-Paul Gaultier's Les Mal Elixir. And I cheated a little bit, looked at the, um, the Accords listings and right off the bat, it was going to be another vanilla forward fragrance. I can't do that to myself for another week or whatever. We're just going to have to save it for another time. Um, I thought a whole lot about what I would open today. I juggled back and forth and looked at my hoard and really just had an awful time trying to decide I was uh, thinking pretty heavily. I kind of wanted something green. Uh, I've got uh, Yerba Mate, uh, Lorenzo Vior, uh, what is it? Uh, Lorenzo Viorese Firens Yerba Mate. I've been wanting to open that one, but today is not that day. You've seen the title, you've already clicked on the video, so it's not like anything's a surprise. Today we're going to open Hugo Boss Oud Aromatic uh, just to give ourselves something different. Maybe a little Oud because the weather is still a little bit cooler and we can wear some Oud while the weather is uh, a little bit cooler without uh, smelling weird or anything. Um, this fragrance has just a quick thing on the back. It says, a masculine and strong take on the luxurious oud fragrance with luscious notes of orange flower and seductive myrrh. Mm, very interesting. So I'll quit jawing on, since I think I've probably talked plenty. More than anybody would like for me to talk, that's for sure. Hurry up and open the stupid fragrance you're saying to yourself, and I agree. I would also like to hurry up, open the stupid fragrance, and get this on my skin. Uh, let's try and get her up the bottom. Without destroying the box or my fingernail. That one did not go so well. We got some sort of white jacket going on. Just faint hints coming out of this, not super leaky or anything like that. And interestingly, the box was facing like this. It came out like this and the bottle is backwards. The boss is facing me. So there's the boss. Go ahead and can you see the, no, you can't. That's the batch code, if you're curious. I do batch codes, what I paid for it, uh, projection, longevity, perfumer, all that kind of thing in the second half of the video. If you're not sticking around for the second half of the video, you're literally missing 50% of the entire thing. So where's the atomizer? It's facing the right way. See, give it up to them. The cheapest plasticiest cap of all time. Um, but otherwise, a fairly nice presentation. Um, in terms of main accords, while we spray this on, we give her the old Juan, Juan, Juan. All right, that was like Juan and a half or two. Um, in terms of main accords, while we spray this on, we've got white floral, oud, amber, sweet, citrus, warm, spicy, balsamic, and soapy. 
And off the bat, this kind of smells like a freshly cleaned uh, Hampton Inn. Uh, that's maybe a little bit older, not quite as new. Mm, what does that tell you? Probably nothing if you're not uh, a Hampton Inn Diamond member. If you haven't stayed at 300 GD hotels and it doesn't tell you anything. Uh, interesting. Very interesting. Not, not very similar to like YSL M7. Not that sort of oud. Um, what was the other fragrance that had oud in it? Uh, it was uh, Dior Homme Parfum was slightly oudy as well. Possibly closer to that than YSL M7. Um, very, very interesting. This is a complete departure from what I've been wearing for the past month. It's almost gross smelling. Um, it's almost off-putting. That That's that oody, oody bits to it. It's almost a bit off-putting. Uh, but not in a bad way, like, off-putting would be obviously bad. It's a bit funky, all right? It's a little funky. Um, hmm. Not, so it's got white floral as that top, uh, accord, our old cop-out, Fragrantica cop-out says, um, probably not the white florals that you're thinking of. Maybe not so grandma -e grandma esque. Uh, it's a bit more masculine than that. Mm, let's see what kind of notes we've got in there. Uh, I don't really have any good guesses or anything like that. And, well, there's not a whole lot on the page to give you or I or anybody else. Our old cop-out gives us on the top, orange blossom in the middle, agarwood, or no, sorry, in the middle, myrrh, and in the base, agarwood or oud. So just the three, not a whole lot to go off of, but there is definitely more going on than just three simple notes. This is fairly complex, I would say interesting it is very interesting it's like i said like i said it smells clean like a clean hotel room it's weird because a whole bunch of people have stayed in it and there is that kind of muskiness to it that oody muskiness um but somebody has been in there and touched hopefully touched every surface with some sort of disinfectant and it kind of smells sort of like that it's clean ish it's clean esque it's funky but not off kilter it's not ridiculous it's not ugly or sinful um it's a bit weird i'm not a hundred percent sure where i would wear this if I was trying to place it in a specific place. Um, but at this point, I think I just caught a glimpse of the time and I really need to just kind of shut up. I'll let you know how it goes on the other side of the waterfall. We're going to wear this for at least a week and we'll let you know how it goes. So thanks for sticking with me, you guys. Alrighty, folks. I've been wearing Hugo Boss Boss Bottled Oud Aromatic for a week now. So I think it's time we can wrap up our thoughts and move on to something a little bit different. This fragrance was not nearly as green as I was hoping it would be, despite its name, despite its packaging, and everything else that you would kind of expect. Uh, it was not as tart, green, aromatic as I was really thinking it would be. Um, possibly a bit more fruity, a bit more musky, 
closer to that orange blossom note. Uh, it is what it is. Perhaps not my favorite offering. Who cares? Um, perfumer. Could not really find a definitive answer. Uh, one website said, and we'll go with this, uh, Anique Minardo, who also has her name on Hugo Boss Bottled. Uh, and uh, interestingly enough, Aqua de Joe and Bulgari Black, two very popular and famous fragrances. So we'll just give it to her and say it's hers. In terms of batch code, I've got 9003, which gives us an exact born on date of January 3rd, 2019, which makes this bottle already five years and three months old, a few days on top of that as well. So is it possible that this changed scent profile, has it changed any in its... Um, mass maceration or any of that kind of thing perhaps uh we're just going with what it smells like now which is is what it is in terms of housekeeping i got this off of fragrance net for 61 dollars and 79 cents along with the oud regular and oud saffron oud saffron was the most expensive i'm pretty sure bottled oud was the cheapest uh, 6179, they list 3.4 ounces on the bottom, and that works out to $18.17 an ounce. It's not too bad, really. May perhaps a little cheaper. It smells a little cheaper than that, maybe $13 to $14 range. It's just not mind blowing or amazing, something like that. You know what I'm saying? Um, $20 an ounce, I would really hope it would perhaps be be a little more energetic. I don't know. Uh, in terms of projection, this is kind of where we start lacking. Um, it's probably also why the dollar per ounce is, could be a little better. Projection, really not all that great. I'm calling it like a four out of 10. And that's really just early on. A couple hours in, it basically turns down Pretty much just a skin scent from what I can find. That was with five-ish sprays. I really didn't think I was overdoing it. I wasn't going anosmic. Uh, it just really is not all that powerful. On the contrary, the longevity, it's like eight to ten hours. You get a full work day out of it. But again, it's just a dang skin scent. It's not really pushing out or doing doing a whole bunch of work for you. Um, Siage didn't really seem strong or anything like that, so I don't really know why it's sticking around for so long. Perhaps it wants to just do some skin work. Who knows? It's just a little bit sticky. Not that strong. Um, I really found this to be similar, and, you know, you this probably does not tell a lot of you what this is but if you go to the store and buy a game green blunt perhaps if they don't sell those anymore uh, a white grape cigarillo uh, cigarillo as they're called up here because we don't have a lot of uh, spanish influence you get yourself a game uh, white grape cigarillo it's kind of like that to be honest it's sort of fruity it honestly has a little bit of that tobacco uh, scent accord to it, in my opinion. Perhaps not what the traditional tobacco note is in fragrances, but this it smells like it smells like a cigarillo. Like if you're gonna like bust that thing open and like refill it, that's what it smells like. It smells like blunt guts. If you're my age and you did any of the things that I did back in 2009, 2010 then you know what this smells like. That's what this fragrance is. It's got the hints of tobacco. It's got a resinous sweetness to it. That's, you know, you cop it up to the myrrh. Um, I don't think, and I personally haven't, uh, I don't think a lot of people have smelled like a handful of myrrh. I don't think that just gets out and about in uh, common society. So 
having some sort of reference to that, not, I don't really have one, um, but it is sort of a resinous sweetness that goes along with that uh, tobacco, green tobacco-y kind of, and I say green, but it's like, it's like a flavoring, it's fake apple or fake grape or some, some shit like that. Um, but that is what it is. It's less aromatic than it is fruity, to be honest with you. Um, the oud, which is probably what most people are, are interested in, is it's vaguely woody. It sits underneath. It's definitely not prominent, but it is there. Um, since you're going to be diving into your into your the crook of your elbow or wherever you spray this just to get a hint of it um it, you pick up that woody oody bit but it's kind of dirty to be honest with you it's less of a opulent law office and more of like uh, a woody uh, uh, woody tree stump you got the dirt mixed in there and you're trying to get it out out of the ground it's dirty and woody um but not very prominent so if you're trying to wear some sort of oud and not trying to stink everybody out and make everybody wonder what you're wearing then perhaps this isn't the worst oud that you could pick up but i can't really suggest going out and buying this not that you will have much luck buying it anyways you can get it on eBay, it's super expensive, or other discounters, generally, from what I saw. It's pretty expensive. $60 is probably the most you're going to want to pay for it. It's kind of what I paid, and I really wouldn't want anybody spending more than that on my word. So, that being said, you guys, find something that's as unique as you are. Wear it unabashedly. Until the next time I see you, talk to you, or anything else, take it easy, you guys. Thanks.